All right, Buena Seta, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Big Rich. Queens, New York City. Sunday night. I've been grinding all day, and let me tell you right now, the streets may be empty, but a lot of people who are out there grinding, their pockets are not. So salute to all the grinders. And let me do a special shout-out for my peoples at Ornella Trattoria in Astoria. Beautiful place, delicious food. What a great guy, classy. Salute to all the people out there, all right? Uh, let's get right into business, Mom Story Season 2. I promised you a mom story. And um, for tonight, it's not going to be long, but it's going to be an oldie and a goodie. I'm going back, uh, you know, a little, little history. We're going to do some history, all right? Uh, salute to the GGC boys. That's the Gorilla Glue crew. If you don't know, now you do. Throw some smoke in the atmosphere. Wipe your feet on the rug. It's Sunday night. Let's get busy. Time for business. Write out the pages of CostraNostraNews.com. This is some place that I frequent very often. You should as well. A lot of great articles, man. This is where I'm going to get my education. Reading, speaking, talking. Once I speak about it, it gets filed into memory. My brain is like a computer. Streets of New York City was dead today. Even it was a nice day today, but dead, empty. It, it's like you live in the country. I don't know what to tell you. We'll talk about it tomorrow morning on Waking Up at Ruckus. Hopefully everything goes well. Let's get right into business. By Ed Scarpo. From CostraNostraNews.com, write it down. When the Chicago outfit feuded with the Milwaukee family. In 1961, Tony Accardo, the then boss of the Chicago outfit, likely came close to ordering a hit on longtime Milwaukee boss Frank Balistreri. After Balistreri sanctioned the murder of a nightclub operator and raised so much heat from the law enforcement that the hoodlum element couldn't get away with anything, and weren't making any money. This is according to the newly released information from FBI records that are now part of the Chicago Sun-Times. The FBI files database, as the newspapers recently reported. And of course, Sam Mooney Giacana was the front boss of the outfit in 1961 as a cardo for decades used front bosses to shield himself from law enforcement. Balistrieri, who you see on the screen, Diffused the situation with Chicago and continued breathing until natural causes finally ended his life in 1993 at the age of 74. Accardo died the year before at the age of 86. Giacana, who rose to the top in the 1950s, was murdered in 1975. On April 19, 1961, confidential informant T6, whoever that is, a disgracia advice that the Chicago hoodlum faction under Tony Accardo is feuding with the Balistrieri faction in Milwaukee. Milwaukee's organized crime family, which Balistrieri led for several decades, was one of the Midwest crime families that was historically under the Chicago outfit. According to the informant, the reason for this quarrel goes back to the murder of a nightclub operator, Izzy Pogrop. More than a year ago, which was allegedly ordered by Frank Balistrieri. The Chicago faction, according to the informant, did not want Pogrob's murder and did not agree with his being killed, the records show. They are also angry because as a result of this murder, police vigilance had increased to the point where the hoodlum element couldn't get away with anything and weren't making any money. Balistrieri was saved from the Chicago group this long because he was the nephew of one of the big hoodlums in Kansas City and because, the name was blackened out in the FBI records, had apparently, talked, had apparently tried to talk to the Chicago group out of doing anything to Balistrieri. The FBI records, publicly available because Balistrieri is dead, though with numerous redactions, delve into the Milwaukee's mob's connection to Ocardo and the Chicago mob and show Milwaukee's place in the grander organized crime syndicate that was a powerful force in America for the better part of the 20th century. An informant, a disgracia, advised that the Milwaukee organization is under the direct supervision of the Italian organization in Chicago, which is headed by Tony Accardo. He added that Accardo attends the yearly meeting of the Milwaukee's organization, according to documents. 
Balistrieri also promoted boxing events in Milwaukee, and Accardo had a piece of those interests and informants told federal investigators. Felix Milwaukee Phil Aldericio, a Chicago gangster, also was a partner in just about everything that Frank has, an informant told authorities in 1965. A disgrace, odd. Balistrieri's business interests over the years included bars, restaurants, and striptease operations. He distributed coin-operated devices, including jukeboxes. He maintained veto power over large robberies and burglaries and sold stolen items, sometimes in Chicago, record show. He muscled legitimate businesses and individuals. Balistrieri also oversaw the gambling in southeast Wisconsin and some of Chicago's far north suburbs. Izzy Pogrob was found on January 9, 1960, bound and blindfolded in a ditch with nine bullets in him. Not eight, but nine. He reportedly inked his death warrant when he went to the police about a shakedown attempt by Louis Fazio. You don't go to the police, mean care. They're probably it. Come on, man. Pog Rob was the colorful owner of the infamous Brass Rail, a venue for local and national jazz acts, which opened in 1956 on Third and Wells in downtown Milwaukee. It was located next door, and it's been said connected by a secret entrance to the Princess Theater, a former 900 seat movie place that fell from grace to become a triple X theater. Remember you was a kid, the triple X theaters, you try to sneak out what they was playing, you know, outside the posters and shit without your parents seeing you, huh? On Wednesday, January 6, 1960, about 3 a.m., Izzy was closing the brass rail along with his employees. These included bartenders and Henry Hooks Hansher and master of ceremonies, Hugh Patton. He decided to take them all out to breakfast down the street at the Belmont Hotel. Izzy was 320 plus pounds and, and eating and eating was his favorite thing to do next to flashing his giant roll of cold hard cash. It was reported that Izzy loved the feel of the money, you know? Let me feel your fabric. Accounts of what type of person Izzy was. He was a desperado, but he and his brother always made a good living. He was a character, said Simi Felon, owner of the Fane Brothers Restaurant Supply Store on King Drive. I knew his brother, Irv, better than I knew Izzy. Irv had a pawn shop about a block away from the Brass Rail. We used to hang out there in the back room and play cards. Fane says that Pogrob Brothers also managed a liquor store in the same area. Quote, I remember him. Oh, man, he was a fucking idiot. I hate to say he was big and dumb. Tried to be a bully. He was obnoxious, says Manti Ellis, a, that frequented and played the brass rail. He was like 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, he must have weighed like 550 pounds, 400 or 500 pounds. He's actually reported to be about 320 pounds. Couldn't he keep his mouth shut, Ellis recalled, with a laugh. Well, I don't know. Seems like Ellis did a lot of talking, too. I'm a little disrespectful there. It's just after 3 a.m., and he was eating and flashing his roll of cash, about 1500 at the Belmont's Hotel Cafe, while a mysterious man with, a long, with long dyed blonde hair sat near the group eavesdropping. The man then conferred with two men sitting in the booth nearby, the waitress working that night reported to the Milwaukee Journal. After eating, Izzy crawled in his huge white Cadillac and headed home. It was the last he was seen alive. The next day, the Cadillac was found splattered in blood. Later, Izzy was found too. He was blindfolded, shot nine times in the head, neck, and dumped in a drainage ditch off Highway 167 in McQuan. The murder has never been solved. Izzy's death wasn't the first murder with ties to the club. Christina Caligaro was a 22-year-old twice-married exotic dancer, according to a 1959 Milwaukee Sentinel report. She stripped under the name Brenda Bay at the Brass Rail for eight weeks in the fall of 1959 and worked other strip clubs as well. On December 20th, 1959, she was found shot four times on a gravel road outside of Peoria, Wisconsin, dressed in her dance costume. Pa Grob and Kali Garo were murdered about a year apart, both shot and ditched, both unsolved. Izzy's brother, Irving Pogrob took over the brass rail after Izzy's death, but by all accounts wasn't as flashy as his brother. He eventually sold the business to someone better suited for it, like 
Mr. Fancy Pants, a.k.a. Mr. Slick, a.k.a. the sharply dressed Frankie P. Balistrieri, head of the Milwaukee Mafia. Amongst other things, he ran casino skimming and vending machine rackets. One of his reported favorite methods of disposing of someone was by car bomb, which gave him the nickname the Mad Bomber. First of all, salute to Ed Scarpo with a real cool article. All right, CostaNostraNews.com, Ed Scarpo, go check it out. Salute to the team, salute to Team Ruckus, the ho Hong Gang, Mob Story Season 2, Sunday night, hope everything's all right. Peace to the Gorilla Glue Crew. Make sure you like, comment, share, and let me know what you're throwing in the atmosphere tonight. Salute. Good night. Be safe. We'll talk in the morning.